Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I've been out here today on the Tennessee River doing some catfishing in my new kayak. This is the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot. I got this kayak back in around mid-July and before I could get my first catfishing trip in with it, I had a malfunction. And so I touched on that in a recent video, but in case you missed it, I'll kind of cover it again in this one. So what had happened, I took this kayak out for my first trip out on the water, did a little bass fishing for a couple hours. And I had wrapped up filming and was on my way back to the car. And I thought, you know, I'm going to stop and fish just one more spot. And the kayak had worked, the motor had worked perfectly prior to that. It's got this Minn Kota motor with iPilot that's built specifically for this kayak. And so I'd stopped off to fish that one more spot before heading home in spot lock mode. And all of a sudden it just went crazy. The motor went haywire, went full speed right toward the bank. I had to turn it off real fast. And... After that, I could not get the GPS to acquire a signal again. It just went out. So I called Old Town's customer service. Uh, they were excellent, walked me through like a series of checks trying to diagnose the problem. And we thought initially that I had a bad relay. There's a relay up there that connects your kill switch. And when we bypassed that, the GPS started working again. And so I thought, okay, well, that's a simple fix, no problem. So I took it over to the lake, put it in the water about 10 minutes, going through the various GPS functions, all worked flawlessly. So I thought, okay, that's the problem, it's the relay. So I get everything loaded up for the next trip. I'm going out to do some catfishing. On the water, maybe five minutes, the GPS goes out again. And I could not get it to acquire a signal for nothing again after that. So got back in touch with Old Town's customer service. Again, they were awesome. They have sent me a brand new motor. So that was delivered yesterday. So I've got it out here on the water today, putting it to the test. And so this new motor has worked perfectly so far. I've been on the water about five hours now today. I've been in spot lock mode the whole time. I've been uh, anchored down with the spot lock here on this ledge doing some suspend fishing. And I wanted to get out here and, you know, obviously try out the new motor, make sure that it's uh, functioning well, and also try out my rod holders. I replaced the factory gear tracks with a stronger version, a metal version with a backing plate, reinforced my rod holders so it would hopefully be able to hold up to a big fish. And I came out here with the goal of putting them to the test today. And fortunately, I was able to get a few fish. Here's the action. This rod right here got hit and down it goes. Pick up on him. Well, folks, fish number, catfish number one anyway, in the new kayak. Rod holder held up good to that takedown. That was a concern. <laughs> Make sure I got those things mounted right. I'm actually fishing with four rods out here today just to try to hopefully get enough action to test all four rod holders out. Make sure they're going to be solid and not get ripped off the kayak or something crazy like that. <laughs> Don't want any more of those kind of mishaps. It's going to be first catfish in the new one. Let's see if we get him up here, see what he is. I'm guessing it's probably going to be a blue. This one ate a skipjack head. I've got fresh skipjack out here today. Got two head pieces and two body pieces on my four rod. Yep, we got a blue cat. Catfish number one's a blue. There he is, folks. Not very big, but he's getting a skunk out through the head piece off, so I'm gonna have to replace it. Yeah, folks, there it is. So I've been out here this morning, uh, spot locked, using the motor here, the Minn Kota motor on this Old Town Sportsman Autopilot kayak and I've had it holding me on this ledge. I'm kind of on that deepest break line right before it moves up into a creek here, and I've got my baits raised up just a couple feet off the bottom. Now, I don't have a graph installed on this kayak yet, so I'm using my phone app and just point of sight. I've fished this area of the river enough. I can use visual landmarks to confirm my location. The Navionics app on my phone is very accurate for the body of water that I fish. There's a pole up here that I can see where I'm at and kind of, you can just use point of sight to kind of make sure that you're kind of where you need to be. And so I've used that to watch the motor, watch the kayak position as it's adjusted for wind and boat wake, et cetera, this morning. 
and this thing has held me on a very very tight location which is one of my concerns with using the spot lock for suspend fishing because you know if you watch my videos you know I like to put my baits on a specific spot I like to fish the spot on the spot if you can if you can envision that so so far so good uh, with that so um, fish has been limited out here so far been on the water about an hour that's the first bite but hopefully it's gonna pick up as the morning goes on let's get another bait on there and see if we can find something bigger all right folks there's our next bait another head piece again I've got two head pieces and two body pieces I went skipjack fishing the other day with Mark Rocky. he owns the deuces wild fishing charters here in East Tennessee and me and him are pretty good friends and so he's normally pretty booked up but he had an open day and he messaged me and said hey man I'm on the skipjack if you want to hop on the boat and join me so I was like heck yes I want to join you so we went out there tore up the skipjack so I've got a whole cooler full of fresh bait here so thank you Mark and y'all are interested in a fishing trip here in East Tennessee Deuces Wild Fishing Charters is where it's at Mark and his son Ace run a top-notch operation there they've got a one of those big sea arc I think it's the easy cat or something like that it's the one with the couches on there that thing is super comfortable super stable and they'll put you on some fish oh here goes this rod here goes this one. Oh yeah well that's another rod holder we know will stand up this one here though ate a body section of that skipjack up here we got the carnival cruise line going by it's a friday when i'm filming this pleasure boat traffic shouldn't be too bad that kind of boat right there don't put off a big wake anyway it's some wake boaters that i hate or the big house boats yeah we got another blue about the same size as the other one Alright guys, another just small blue there, just dink size. I'm gonna get rid of him before he flops. I feel him about to, you just know when they about to start spinning on you. Alright, so that's another rod holder there that at least didn't go flying off the kayak. I've reinforced these gear tracks. The ones that come stock on this kayak are fine for things like fish finders, camera mounts, cup holders, even rod holders that are lighter duty applications like maybe trolling for bass or even maybe larger fish if you're trolling with lines off the back of the kayak so the pressure is going that way. But suspend fishing for catfish the way I do with that downward torque that these big fish are going to put on that, on that rod and which will in turn put upward and outward pressure on that gear track. The ones that come stock on this, the plastic gear tracks that are just screwed in the hole, they're just not suitable for this application. So I uh, went through and removed those, got some metal gear tracks from Yak Attack, and I drilled the holes out and run a backing plate, kind of snaked it through uh, using fishing line, pulled it up into place. So now my gear tracks, not only are they metal, but they got that backing plate on there, so they're a lot more secure. In addition to that, I've made some uh, rod holder bases for my rod holder bases that allows me to bolt the uh, bases with four bolts into uh, that contraption and then use two bolts into my gear track. So by using that larger base, it allows me to put the pressure on the, on the top rail of the kayak because that's the strongest part. That's the thickest plastic on the kayak and that part's not going to give. So by dispersing that torque, that pressure into that top rail of the kayak, it's going to make these rod holders a lot more secure, which I need for what I do. So, so far so good on those two. I'd really like to test these two out and I'd like to hook into a dang monster and really put them to the test. But that may take some time. I don't know if that'll happen today or not. But so far, so good. There's our next bait going down, skipjack body piece. I know some people had mentioned in the comments that they were concerned with me fishing with down lines right under the kayak. That when fish take off it's gonna get my line wrapped in the motor and folks I can tell you that's not gonna be an issue this motor the clearance under the kayak it's not very far I mean it's just right up basically got enough room for the prop 
to clear the bottom of the hull. So a fish would have to swim at such a severe angle to catch that prop. It's just not going to happen. I've been using that torpedo motor on my Hobie kayak for the last two years in the footwell space or the Mirage Drive spot. Uh, kind of the same situation as this. I've never broke a fish off due to line getting wrapped in the prop. So that will not be an issue with this kayak. Oh, this rod got hit. There he goes. I'm just letting him pull a little bit there. To, again, kind of test out these rod holders today. I'll make sure these things are going to hold up to my needs. I do think this one here is going to be a little bit bigger than the other two that we've caught so far. It's been slow out here this morning. I ain't I haven't really had much dink action or anything going on. I was hoping to maybe get a few more fish than what I've got, but I'm still going to fish another couple hours out here, so there's still time for it to turn around. Well, folks, I've lied to you. I thought that was a little better when he when I first picked up on him, but he's just going to be another another small one. That's been the theme of the last two or three weeks for me. Just can't get on anything big. Uh-oh, uh-oh, y'all. That front rod's going down. Here's this fish. Let me pick up on this one. Man, that one took off. That one took off. Well, I was trying to show you all the other one. And I want you to look here, y'all. That fish swam this way right under the prop of that motor but again like i was talking about earlier because it's so close to the bottom of the hole there it's not an issue it's not going to get in there and cut my line he went directly under the kayak right under that prop so no issues it's encouraging though we're getting here i'd sit here for a while nothing going on and this one here hit before I could land the other one. So maybe we got some active fish moving through. This one here is going to be the biggest of the morning. I'm pretty convinced of that. That last one tricked me. Ended up being about the same size as the others. But I'm pretty pretty sure this one here is going to be a... I don't think it's going to be no monster, but it's definitely going to be a little better quality. And again, that front rod holder there on that side, it held up well. These, um, I talked about the rod holders in that Facebook video I did and kind of showed them off. I'll do a more thorough video about this kayak once I've had more time in it. I want to, I want to get some seat time in it, you know, fish for it, fish out of it about a month, really get things dialed in of where I want to put things and store stuff and give all the features of it a, a full test. See what works, what doesn't work, what I like, what I don't like, and all that stuff. I know everybody does reviews as soon as they get a product, and that just ain't how I roll. I gotta, I gotta get some time with it. Goodness, man, these things are pulling. Goodness. Hopefully that motor's not too loud on the camera there. It's uh, quiet when it's operating, but the turning of it's a little bit loud. Yeah, it's a good fish right here, folks. This is a good fish. I knew he was a little bit better quality than them dinks we've been getting. Just in the way he took it down. Look at that thing. Look at that thing right there, man. I'm gonna get him back up here again. Ate that big old skipjack head, folks. Yeah. Breaking this kayak in the right way. All right, y'all. Yeah, now that's how you slime a kayak up right there, folks. That was one of them little old small bass or these dink catfish that we've been catching. Big old skipjack head. Just caught us a big old blue cat.
There, look at that, man. <laughs> Love it. Anchor fishing without the anchor. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Woo. Well, we ain't seen a whole lot of fish this size lately, have we? It's been a rough go of it lately, but put some time in out here this morning on this ledge. It's been productive for me in the past. But like I mentioned earlier, it's just one of those places without a graph. I can use my Navionics phone app and just kind of triangulate myself here with that marker up there, the house over here, this tree on this side of me, and kind of just be able to know where I'm at. So, got my baits in the right spot. And I was ready when this one come along. All right, I'll send him home. Let's do it again when you're even bigger. He's out of here. Now some of you right now are freaking out because you see my remote sitting here on the edge and you think, man, he's gonna knock that thing over. Folks, I got it clipped to my seat. <laughs> the last video I did, well, that first trip I was in this with doing the bass fishing, people were worried to death because I had that remote in my hand here showing it to the camera. I only had it unclipped from my life jacket just so I could hold it up far enough for the camera to see. But people were commenting nonstop on that that I was going to lose that thing. But nevertheless, y'all, man, that was a good fish. It was a fun time. I'm going to drop that bait down and see if we can do it again. All right, guys, that's a wrap on today's video. Action out here today was pretty limited. I didn't get many fish, but thankfully I was able to get enough to kind of test out my rod holders. Got that one nice blue cat. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I was thankful to hook into him. But most importantly, the motor functioned flawlessly. Hopefully that last motor was just a rare anomaly glitch, whatever. You know, things happen. These companies are putting out thousands of products every year. Occasionally you're gonna have some quality control issues and have a bad product slip through the cracks. But, you know, Old Town's customer service, they were awesome. They got me back in business here within two weeks. So, you know, that's how I kind of look at things. Things are going to go wrong. You're going to have equipment malfunctions. I look at it from a customer service perspective. Does the company take care of you? Do they get you back on the water in a timely manner? And Old Town has done that for me. So uh, I'm going to, you know, continue to use this kayak here, put it through the paces. I know everybody's going to ask me for a walkthrough video to kind of show everything. And, I will do that type of video soon, but it ain't gonna be now. I'm gonna give it some time, give it a month or so, just get a few more trips in this kayak, get everything situated how I want, and be able to have enough time in it to give you an informed opinion on what I like and what I don't like, etc. So once I get all that done, I'll put together a more comprehensive review and walkthrough video. But uh, anyway, guys, today's trip was a success, but I'm gonna take it on home to the air condition. I'll see you again soon.